In today's video, I'm showing you the 12 volt system in the 76 series, including the best thing I've ever seen to make a 12 volt system dead set easy to install, even for the novice installer. I'll show you the charger, the solar compressor, the fridge, the lighting, the inverter, the oven, all the switches and USB chargers. I'll also show you the idea that I came up with to get the lighting on the roof down into the 12 volt system. I used to run a 12 volt system in the 76 series, a very basic one that most people generally run. I'm talking about a simple battery setup with the battery in the front, a DC-DC charger, a secondary battery, and you might have a little switch block off the side of that with some fuses in it that you're going to plug things into like your external lighting, maybe a USB charger, things like that. And that's really all I had in there. That was just to power the fridge, because you need beer. But to do a more advanced setup in the back of this, any four wheel drive, it can be a little bit daunting. And if you're anything like me, you go and do some research online and it becomes even more overwhelming. Because I wanted everything that I've got installed in the vehicle now installed, like compressor, fridge, oven, uh, inverter, all those things, I was a little bit daunted by how to do it all. Now I've got a few tips for you, but this one here, this bit of kit right here, this made it a dream to install. As I've said in other videos, one of the best things that you can do when you're doing your own fit out, because you, know, you wanna have a crack at doing it yourself, is to go and befriend your local auto electrician. Buy all the gear that you're going to be buying for your 12 volt system from them, or at least the vast majority of it, the key component, and show them what your plan is. They may correct it and say, put a different fuse in here, put a different fuse there, you don't need that fuse. They'll tell you those sorts of things. The second piece of advice is to buy good kit. Don't buy cheap eBay shit because you're going to regret it in the long run. Buy quality stuff from your auto elect. Chances are they're going to sell you good quality stuff anyway. The third thing is that the more wiring that you run, in your 12 volt system, two things. One, it looks untidy or generally will look untidy. And two, it becomes bloody confusing. And you may remember that I have a background with electronics, with photocopiers and printers and so forth, but still I find this a little bit daunting because I'm playing with a different sort of voltage setup and I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm designing it myself. But one key thing came to be when I started researching and that's his Egon DC hub. In the back here on any other installation, there's generally going to be a lot of wiring, a lot of bus bars, a lot of fuses, all scattered around the place. But what this does is it makes it easy to understand even for the most novice installer. This brings everything, all of your 12 volt system back to one place. It cuts down on wiring, it makes it easy to install, and it definitely saves you time on your installation. And the, the, the thing that puts the cherry on top is it looks schmick. It looks like it's a really professional job and uh, I did it. The layout of this is, it's, it's actually not like anything I've seen before. It's a little bit similar, I guess, to the Red Arc Management 30 or Manager 30. So this is a Red Arc DC-DC 25 amp charger. And it, all of the cabling runs into this board. And as I said before, the instructions are mint. They just work really, really well. Like, it's very easy to understand. So I've got the power from the, from the vehicle battery, the crank battery coming into here. And there's little points underneath where all the wiring runs in and you'll zip tie that in. So that's not moving anywhere, that's rock solid. The DC-DC charger brings it out and in of the board up here. So you're not wiring this to anything else besides the DC hub. And that's the common theme throughout all the installation. The wiring for the battery comes into the DC hub. The wiring from the from the uh, house battery comes into the DC hub. The wiring for the compressor comes into the DC hub. The wiring for everything else except the inverter comes into the DC hub. So everything from all over the vehicle is coming back to that one point. It cuts down on wiring, it cuts down on all the other fuses because all the fuses are right there on the board. You don't know what size wiring to use, read the instructions. You don't know what fuse to use, read the instructions. It's dead set simple to understand what's going on in there. And again, I've said this in so many other videos, I love dealing with Australian companies. This thing is Australian design. I think it's Australian made, but certainly Australian designed by the guys over there in Perth. And when I wasn't sure about exactly how to set this one particular part of it up, as that was the secondary uh, solar panel, which I haven't got installed yet, um, I, I just contacted them and the guy who designed it, what's his name? 
it escapes me. I'll put it right here. Really sorry, dude, if you ever watch this. Um, he came straight back to me and, and gave me the information that I wanted. And that's the beauty of dealing with these Aussie companies. So any questions that I had, they answered it straight away. So if you're sitting on the fence, even a little bit about, this is a little bit beyond me, I don't think I can install this, think again, because this was so easy to install. Simple to follow instructions, very good customer service. Really, you, you can't go wrong. You can absolutely install this. All the things that I have installed in this vehicle, the fridge, guess where it goes? Back to the DC hub. The oven, guess where it goes? Back to the DC hub. All the lighting that's in this vehicle, all the rock lights up the top here, all the lighting for the awning, the interior lights, all of these switches here, guess where it all goes? Back to the DC hub. I just can't stress how easy that bit of kit that DC Hub made the installation of this. You see, I've also got a shunt sitting in here and that's for the management system uh, so I can see how much is remaining on the battery. The battery that I'm using is an ATEM power battery. It's a 150 amp hour lithium battery from ATEM power. The previous battery that I had in the cruiser was a slimline ATEM power and that thing didn't miss a beat. I'm very happy with the brand. So the shunt goes over to Renergy shunt. It goes over to the indicator on the back. It shows me how much power I have left and the current draw that I have in that battery right then. That's the only thing that I haven't got going through the DC hub and the wiring diagrams that are in the instructions are very clear on how to wire that. One of the things that I really struggled with with this vehicle and with the Pajero I had before this was getting the lighting that I've got up here on the roof and like solar panels and things like that, how to get that down into the cabin of the vehicle. And everyone can do it a little bit differently. There's a few different things that I've seen for the 76 series and I actually used one of them, obviously. The lighting that I've got up here, one is for the awning light, uh, another one here for the back rock lights here and on the left or right hand side of the vehicle, I've got two more rock lights, exactly the same as this. And they're all wired together and you can go and have a look at the wedge tile roof rack review that I've done and it shows you how I've wired all that up. But I'll bring it down through a trailer cable. It's a uh, five core trailer cable. So I'm using one of them as an earth and the one for the awning, one for this pair and one for that pair. All I've done is up the top here, I've put all that wiring together, down this trailer cable here and I've just sicker flexed that onto the wall and then through the grommet on the back side here of the door. On the other side, what I've got going on there is the same thing, exactly the same setup going the same way and that's a dedicated line for the solar panel and the solar panel wiring comes down guess where it goes to the DC so this hub. bank of switches here one is for the awning lights another one there for the rear lights the LEDs on the back here the rock lights like I said before another one there for the right hand side this one here is the interior lights I've got some steady strips on either side over here uh, this one here is for the compressor for the TJM compressor that you may have seen back there and this one here for the so other the wiring comes down through that trailer cable up to the back of those switches and goes to each individual switch depending on the what the switch is for obviously and the power for that bank of switches for each bank comes from the dc hub up here to and each each set of uh, bank of switches is fused the compressor is fused separately that one there i've run it separately because it draws more current than the led lights the oven I ended up not actually using that switch. That switch is just there now for pretty purposes because the oven, we've got two switches on the oven and I figure with both of the, the chances of both of them moving at the same time with a bit of kit moving around the back of the vehicle is pretty bloody slim. So I decided the redundancy that I had in that switch, I just don't think I need it. The inverter that I've got here is a Renergy inverter. It's a thousand watt inverter. You can certainly get more, you can certainly get less. Because it's uh, 1,000 watt, I don't run it through the DC hub. I run it directly into the battery and piggybacked it onto the shunt. So the shunt knows what power is being drawn by that as well. So we're not missing out on the calculations of what the shunt is calibrating us and telling us on the screen down here of how much energy we've got left. I only use the um, inverter really to charge the batteries. I've got three YouTube channels and when I go away, I'm filming a lot of stuff. So I need to film... I need to charge batteries for the cameras, multiple cameras, uh, drone batteries, all that sort of stuff. And that's that's really all I use it for. I'm not into inverter cooking, uh, inverter cooking, is that what they're called? No, induction cooking, anything like that. I'm not into that at all, but there's no reason that you couldn't put a larger inverter into the system that I have right here and it will work exactly the same as everything else I've told you. Installation of all of this was dead set simple. All I've got there is a, a piece of plywood. I've painted it black just so it looks pretty and laid everything out 
all the two things. I left enough room there for a uh, solar controller to go onto a solar blanket when I decide to do that in the future. I, I laid it out, screwed it all down on the back of the DC hub. So I've bought the DC hub, this, the PCB, the printed circuit board, and the enclosure that you buy them separately. I think all up, I think this cost about $700. And you might think, that's bloody expensive. However, you're going to save on all the switch, ha or the switch or the fuse housing, a lot of wiring, a bucket load of time because it just saved me so much time. It's going to make it look really impressive. I think that looks pretty good. It looks professional, it looks slick. Um, and the service behind it, well, you can't, you can't fault it. It's been very, very good. So if you are on the fence and thinking, I'm gonna do this myself or am I not going to do this myself, definitely go and check this out. There's going to be people putting the comments here, you don't need that, just put a switch box, that sort of stuff. And that's fine, that, that will, if you, you do you and I'll do me. If you're on the fence though about doing this yourself, this is absolutely going to help you do it. If I was to start all of this installation again, knowing what I know now and gone through the installation process like I have, there's only one thing I would do differently. Everything else would be exactly as I've done it. And the one thing I would do differently is the strip lighting in there, the LED strip lighting that I've got for the interior lights. It's freaking bright. It's like super bright. And I can fix that by just trimming it a little bit and not making it as long and it will let out less light because of those LEDs, which I may well do in the future. But if I had my time again, I would find some strip lighting, some LED strip lighting. I think hardcore make them because that's the one I've got up. I think it was hardcore. I'm almost certain it was hardcore. That's the one I've got for the awning. And I would have them as an amber light, not a white light because white light, when I'm out bush uh, filming uh, astro content for my other channel, and I come to the back of the vehicle, I turn the interior light on, I can't see anything for a few minutes because it's just my night, my night vision just gone. That's the only thing I would change. Other than that, I'm absolutely stoked with this. What do you think? I'd love to know your thoughts. That's it for today. Catch you later.